good morning everyone let's continue with the biology bridge course in my previous class i did mention few of the important characteristic features or salient features of living things continuing with that topic the next feature of the living thing is digestion digestion is the process which takes place in the living thing here in case of digestion the complex food materials which the organism had consumed it will be broken down into small fragments to release energy that is the overall view of a digestion process but moving further if you observe keenly digestion is of two types one is the extracellular digestion and second type of digestion is called as intracellular digestion there are two types in digestion first one is extracellular and second type is intracellular intracellular the name itself suggests extracellular here the digestion is going to take place outside the cell extra means outside cellular means outside outside the cell extracellular digestion takes place outside the cell so this type of digestion you have seen in multicellular organisms the best example is the human being in your 10th standard syllabus there was a chapter in first chapter you learned in the life process chapter you learned about the digestion phenomenon and digestion involves various enzyme and various secretion it may be gastric hcl or it may be the intestinal juice pancreatic juice and various enzyme they contained and how they were actually involved in the digestion process so this happens in the alimentary canal alimentary canal is nothing but the digestive canal food is taken through the mouth and food enters into the gut and finally it uh, do the peristalsis it comes into the stomach and the digestion starts and later from stomach the food is passed to the hollow body parts such as the small intestine large intestine so this entire digestive system what you have observed it is called as alimentary canal alimentary canal means a pipe or tube like structure through which the food material pass will be passed out and such digestion which is going to take place outside the cell is called as extracellular digestion here in case of extracellular digestion there will be involvement of enzymes enzymes and secretions body secretions or body fluids which have got digestive activity all these things together constitute and they help for the extracellular digestion and next coming to the intracellular digestion once the food is been broken down into simple substance for example starch starch it is a complex polysaccharide it is made up of glucose moieties once these glucose moieties or glucose entities are been separated from the starch this glucose is going to enter into each an individual cell after the entry of glucose into individual cells these cells they break the glucose into carbon dioxide and water releasing energy this type of digestion once the complex carbohydrates have been converted into glucose glucose enters the cell and inside the cell glucose will be converted into carbon dioxide and water with the release of energy this type of digestion which is going to happen only inside the cell we call such digestion as intracellular digestion in case of intracellular digestion you can see the participation of enzymes enzymes so these things you have learned in your 10th grade and moving further with the topic of digestion in puc classes you are going to learn about the different digestive systems digestive systems there are of two types two types of digestive systems two type of digestive systems means based on the presence of the alimentary canal opening alimentary canal means the digestive canal okay it is called as alimentary canal based on the opening and closing points present in the alimentary canal we do classify the digestive system into two types first type is called as 
open type of digestive system and second type is called as closed or you can call it as complete or incomplete complete complete type of digestive system and incomplete incomplete type of digestive system in case of complete type of digestive system where the organism it will be having two openings two openings here you can see I have drawn a rough diagram showing a digestive canal here you can see the presence of two opening the first opening it is present here at the top through food which the food is going to enter into the system and later food will be passed through this alimentary canal what you call it as gut gut or alimentary canal alimentary canal through which the food will be passed and after the completion of digestion process the remaining waste material which will be undigested or which may be toxic if further further if it is held in the digestive canal then these materials it will be thrown out through another opening so here there are two separate openings for the digestive system one is for the entry of the food another one is to throw away the waste material what we call it as excreta if such is the case if two openings are there separately one for entering and one for passing the digestion digested food or the waste or toxic materials then such kind of digestive system we call it as complete digestive system in human beings we have got complete digestive system mouth is the part of the digestive system through which the food is going to gain enter into entry into the body and the anus it is the final opening through which the digested food is thrown out from the body so such type of digestive system we call it as complete digestive system second type of digestive system it is incomplete digestive system in case of incomplete digestive system organism have only one opening that same opening it acts as mouth as well as the anus that means to say the same opening is used to consume the food to take or imbibe the food and after the ingestion of the food the food will be digested and from the same opening the food or digested food or the waste material after the digestion is completed inside the body after the absorption of the minerals and other nutrients the digested food will be absorbed later the toxic materials will be thrown out from the same opening so such kind of digestive system it is called as incomplete digestive system you have all studied the hydra in case of uh, learning the budding phenomenon in the reproduction you have studied the diagram of the hydra and how the budding takes place for budding two examples were given in your 10th standard one is budding in the east and budding in hydra so let me consider the hydra hydra belongs to the phylum coelenterata hydra it is having the body which resembles the vase shape vase shape or cylindrical shaped body and the base of the hydra it is attached to the substratum substratum and it is aquatic in habitat it is freshwater in habitat habitat means it is the place where the organism organism means living thing right where the organism is seen occurring naturally that is called as habitat so in the fresh water you can see the hydra and hydra at its top it has got the mouth or the opening and it will be surrounded by tentacles so these arm like structures what you can see they are the tentacles these tentacles are meant for capturing the food for example there is an algae or diatom like this so it will catch hold of that diatom or the algae and with the help of the tentacle slowly it will put into its mouth or the opening now after catching hold of its prey this prey or the food what you call it will be slowly put into the mouth or the opening what you can see on the upper part and the food that organism it is going to enter into the body cavity it is a hollow body cavity what you can see in the hydra that is called as the coelom hollow body cavity and that's why it is called as coelenterata phylum coelenterata and when the food enters into this body cavity the body cavity it is having cells 
विच विल बी लाइंड इन साइड लाइंड मीन्स कोटेड और प्रेजेंट ऑन द स्टिकिंग ऑन टू द इनर सरफेस फॉर दैट वी यूज द वर्ड लाइनिंग एंड दिस सेल्स दे प्रोड्यूस डाइजेस्टिव एंजाइम्स दीज डाइजेस्टिव एंजाइम्स एंड द सेक्रेशन ऑफ द सेल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन द इनर वॉल ऑफ द बॉडी दे डाइजेस्ट दट ऑर्गेनिज्म और द फूड मेटीरियल दिस फूड मेटीरियल ऑर्गेनिक फूड मेटीरियल इट विल बी डाइजेस्टेड इट विल बी ब्रोकन डाउन इन टू स्मॉल बिट्स एंड फ्रैगमेंट्स and those fragments they will be absorbed by the body wall cells and later the undigested part the remains of the organism or the food material it will be thrown away from the same opening same opening so here you can see a single opening present at the top act as both purpose one is for receiving the food material another is to throw away the unwanted or the excreta if such is the case we call such digestive system as incomplete digestive system so these are the two types of digestive systems what you can observe but whatever the thing is intracellular or extracellular here the major intention behind the digestion phenomenon is to extract the energy from outer source so this digestion not only helps in the absorption of the minerals or the food materials to get the energy but it also helps in the repairing of the tissue if there is any damage to the tissue then particular cells they will be lost they will be dead and these cells they will be remaining in that particular tissue itself these cells should be removed by the activity of the cell organelle called as lysosomes lysosomes are the suicide bags of cells lysosome contain hydrolytic enzymes so once the lysosomes come in contact with the dead tissue the hydrolytic enzymes which are present inside the lysosome will act on the other cell organelles or the broken part of the cell and the cell remaining things which is almost dead means dead it will be digested and it will be again broken down into fragments and the dead cells will be eventually removed from the tissue so this is also called as digestion in broader sense so to be particular in digest about the digestion digestion it is the biological process in which living organisms they were going to dissolve the organic matter or they are going to break the food particles and they will absorb in order to get energy so this is called as the digestion process so this is the next property of the living thing moving on to the another salient characteristic feature of the living organism it is respiration 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 next feature respiration respiration simply or merely means what we can tell exchange of gases exchange of gases so this is called as respiration and in respiration the two gases have been or been exchanged between the biotic and abiotic environment that is carbon dioxide which is produced in the living system living system produces carbon dioxide and in the atmosphere atmosphere there will be oxygen right so carbon dioxide it will be given out to the atmosphere and oxygen it will be taken inside the living system so this type of gaseous exchange we call it as respiration so respiration in case of animals we call it as breathing phenomenon in breathing phenomenon we have got inspiration and expiration respiration is also called as breathing phenomenon or breathing process in breathing process what is practiced by the animals we can see two events one is the expiration process and another one is inspiration process in case of expiration process 
the air is exhaled or it is been thrown out from the lungs that is called as the expiration process in case of inspiration process the atmospheric air it is being filled inside the lung cavity or at the from the outside environment air is taken with the force and the lungs are filled with air so these are the two physical processes what you can tell in case of the breathing phenomenon and next going on to the respiration process the exchange of gas ultimately occurs at the tip of the lungs tip of the lungs it is being characterized by the presence of some cells called as alveoli cells alveoli cells these alveoli cells they are modified squamous epithelial cells in case of uh, human or animals we have got four types of tissues epithelial tissues connective tissue muscular uh, uh, tissue and the nervous tissue these are the four different types of tissues present in animals so the first tissue what i told it is the epithelial tissue this epithelial tissue it is found covering the surfaces of the body in organisms animals and internally externally both the surfaces of the organ it will be covered with the epithelial tissue epi means upper side telial means layer so this tissue is going to cover the upper layer as well as the lower layer both the surfaces of the organ which will be covered with the epithelial tissue one such epithelial tissue or with the cells of the epithelial tissue we call it as epithelial cells and the cell which is present in the alveoli it is nothing but the epithelial cell and it has got very thin cell membrane it has got very thin cell membrane and the presence of thin cell membrane it is going to help the gaseous exchange the carbon dioxide which is produced in the body it will be carried away by the blood and the, when the blood reaches the region of the alveolus the carbon dioxide it diffuses out diffusion it is a biological process or it is also a physical process also where the molecules will move from their region of higher concentration to the region of the lower concentration and diffusion occurs in greater rate in the gaseous molecule when compared to that of the liquid molecules so with the help of diffusion phenomenon carbon dioxide which is present in the blood it will escape out and it will come into the hollow space inside the lungs and the air atmospheric air it contains more oxygen molecules as a result oxygen molecules from the lungs they will diffuse into the blood and thus blood becomes oxygenated means blood becomes rich in oxygen and blood becomes lower in the concentration of the carbon dioxide this is how exactly the gaseous exchange between the external environment and the living system is going to take place so this is regarding the breathing and the exchange of gas phenomenon and respiration if we go for further details oxygen it is being consumed by the living things so you may ask a question or usually uh, students they ask questions sir why it is the only the oxygen gas which will be consumed by the living organs there is so many other gases uh, hydrogen is there helium is there nitrogen is there why can't these gases can be used up by the living things so for the answer for such questions here lies uh, one phenomenon which takes place in the inner membrane of mitochondria so you'll be knowing mitochondria power it is the powerhouse of the cell and mitochondria is involved in the production of atp finally the food what we consume it will be broken down into smaller 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 fragments and one such fragment will enter into the mitochondria and finally there also it will be broken down into carbon dioxide and water there is an event which takes place in the inner membrane of mitochondria which is linked with the production of the atp and in that event there will be passing of electrons through a series of membrane proteins of mitochondria and finally these electrons are being dumped or accepted by the oxygen o2 molecule since we have consumed or we have taken the o2 molecule 
oxygen acts as a final electron acceptor in the respiratory chain inside the mitochondria this is the reason why oxygen becomes the respiratory gas for the survival of the organisms and this is a beautiful phenomenon and in elaborate way you are going to learn this process in the PUC classes. If I explain now also without having the basics it will go above your head. You cannot be able to understand or follow the things because you will be lagging in the basic concepts. So eventually after completion of uh, 12, 13 chapters we will take up this chapter which is called as respiration. In that chapter we are going to explain. But till now you should just be having an idea that uh, our mitochondria it utilizes the oxygen and oxygen receives the electron and it becomes reduced to water molecule electrons also will be dumped into oxygen hydrogen h plus ions will be also dumped into oxygen if oxygen o2 if it receives 4 h plus and 4 electrons it is going to become 2 h2o 1 h plus 1 H plus and 1 electron is equal to 1 hydrogen atom. This you have learnt in chemistry. So here oxygen in case of respiration it is acting as the final electron acceptor. This electrons will be dumped into the oxygen. As a result oxygen will be reduced. Also the protons H plus ions you call it as protons. Protons also will be dumped into the oxygen and oxygen by receiving this 4 H plus and 4 electrons it will be reduced to 2 molecules of water. This is the exact that role of oxygen and how it is been interlinked with the production of ATP. So these are some of the complex concepts which will be dealt in your PU classes. So this is regarding the respiration in case of animals. In plants what happens respiration occurs through opening called as the stomatal pore. If you recall the structure of the stomatal apparatus it contains guard cells these are the guard cells right kidney shaped guard cells kidney dicotyledon plants you can see the presence of kidney shaped guard cells whereas in case of monocotyledon plants the shape of this kidney shaped guard cell it will be in the form of dumbbell shape so let me write it in the renal shape or the kidney shaped or the bean seed shape and it will be surrounded with some cells what we call it as subsidiary cells so these are subsidiary cells subsidiary cells and subsidiary cells it will be in turn surrounded by the epidermal cells these are epidermal cells and these cells at the center we call it as stomatal cells or the guard cells let me label guard cells guard cells these two cells are called as guard cells this is subsidiary cell subsidiary cell this is epidermal cell epidermal cell and put together this entire structure is called as stomatal apparatus in this stomatal apparatus you can see the guard cells when they become turgid that means when they become filled with water 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 molecules enter into the guard cells and guard cells become to swell they become to bulge when the guard cells increase in size bulging happens they move apart then they move apart at the center here a pore will be formed opening will be formed from that opening the water molecule will escape out into atmosphere these stomatal apparatus they are present on the surface of leaves right on the leaf surface you can see the presence of stomatal apparatus and the escaping out of the water molecules through the stomatal form pore in the, its gaseous form we call such process as transpiration transpiration and this pore which is formed temporarily opening and closing will be taking place when the pore is formed then what happens the atmospheric oxygen also it gains 
entry into the plant tissue it will enter inside the plant body so here the respiratory structures of the plant it is called as stomatal apparatus and this is how the stomatal apparatus work for receiving the atmospheric oxygen and to expel out the carbon dioxide so next there will be a question why the carbon dioxide has to be thrown out from the body see plants they use the carbon dioxide and for the photosynthesis process for animals carbon dioxide if it starts getting accumulated in the body or in the blood it becomes toxic it carbon dioxide combines with water to form carbonic acid and if the acid content of the blood increases pH is going to decrease this result in the breaking up of or impairment of the protein functions in the blood so that is how it become carbon dioxide it is harmful to human beings this is the reason why carbon dioxide has to be thrown away or expelled out as and when it is formed so this is regarding the respiration process which is one of the characteristic features of the living thing next moving further after the respiration the next process of the living thing is the growth 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 is defined as an irreversible increase in the dry weight of an organism that is called as growth in growth we have got two types one is increase in the size size of the cell increase in the size or increase in the number of cells all these two all these two these two phenomenon together contribute for the growth growth is not an important criteria or a mandatory criteria to judge whether it is living or not because the crystals or the rock due to the sedimentation process deposition of the other materials on its surface it will also increase in its size during weathering of rocks how soil is formed the rocks they get crushed they become fine powder that we call it as soil during this process there will be expansion on the surface of the rock so here also the growth is going to take place but the difference between the growth which takes place in the non living thing and the living thing is the difference is in case of the living thing growth occurs from inside inside the organism or inside the cell but in case of non living thing growth occurs from outside by deposition by sedimentation process so this is the difference between the growth which happens both in case of living and non living thing and growth in case of living thing is contributed by two activities one is in the increase in the size the size of the cell cell and the nucleus if the size of the cell increases then we can say that yes growth had is been taking place and if the number of cell a count of the cells if they increase if they increase this is also a important parameter to estimate the growth growth can be measured in case of size and in case of number and even on the surface area in case of uh, few plant cells we are going to estimate the growth and to determine the growth there are few patterns of growth studies one is called as logistic growth exponential growth so these type of growth curves will be dealt in the pu classes but till now in the bridge course it's enough to go with the growth and the how the two factors which contribute for the growth so this is another characteristic feature of living thing our next characteristic feature of living thing it is reproduction 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 is a biological process by which an organism will give birth to its young ones or the offspring of its same kind this is called as reproduction is reproduction essential the answer is yes for what purpose for the continuation of the species for the continuation of its generation the reproduction process is essential for the reproduction process enables the life to continue on the earth 
reproduction is a biological process where the cell is going to divide or the organism itself it will divide or few other phenomena you can see the production of the gametes so based on all these wider concepts reproduction can be broadly categorized into two types first type of reproduction it is called asexual reproduction asexual reproduction second type of reproduction is called as sexual sexual reproduction sexual reproduction these are the two modes of reproduction what we observe in the organisms asexual reproduction so this type of reproduction it is seen in primitive organisms primitive organism means so they are very uh, first organisms first they came into existence on earth we call it as primitive organisms and these organisms they are the lower grade of organisms or lower organisms lower organisms these lower organisms they are unicellular organisms mostly and they are bacteria unicellular alga for the consideration you can take the example of alga and bacteria for the primitive organisms and in case of sexual reproduction sexual reproduction can be seen in higher organisms higher organisms means these are the much evolved form of organisms animals or plant having higher degree of organization maybe tissue level of organization organ level of organization still more for the very complex organ system level of organization like this when we go for higher versions or the complexity increases in those cases you can see the practice of sexual reproduction and the second difference or the characteristic feature what i can tell in between the asexual and sexual reproduction in case of asexual reproduction there is production there is no production no production or involvement involvement of gamete fusion but in case of sexual reproduction fusion of gametes occur gametes they are the sex cells they are the reproductive cells the male gamete is called as spermatozoa male gamete male gamete and the female gamete is called as egg or ovum so these gametes they are the reproductive cells if there is fusion of the male and the female gametes then this results in the formation of zygote zygote and zygote further develops into embryo and embryo develops into new organism new organism so this is the sequential process which takes place during sexual reproduction whereas in case of asexual reproduction there is no production of the spermatozoa or egg cells these gametes they are not produced if there is production of gamete also in there is exceptional cases there will be no fusion of the male and female gametes so gametes production they won't occur if production is there also sometimes fusion of the gametes do not take place to form zygote in such cases it is been referred to as asexual reproduction if there is fusion of the male and the female gamete then we call it as the sexual reproduction so this is the second difference between the asexual and the sexual reproduction third difference between the sexual and asexual reproduction is in case of asexual reproduction there is no genetic recombination genetic recombination 
is absent is absent but in case of sexual reproduction there is there is genetic recombination recombination this is the third difference genetic recombination is the offsprings or the daughter cells or the new young ones which are born from the asexual reproduction they resemble their parents exactly because whatever the dna the genetic content is present in that parent the entire genetic content it will be passed on to the next generation or the offsprings or daughter cells or newly formed cell or animal plant or organism so if such is the case then the exact replica of the parent will be produced this kind of production is called as the production of clones clones will be produced only in case of asexual reproduction and there is no genetic recombination there is no merging or the fusion of male and female gametes and there is no genetic recombination means there is no recombination of the genes of both the parents male parent and the female parent so there is no such process in case of asexual reproduction in case of sexual reproduction since there is fusion of the male and the female dna content the genes there will be arise of new characteristic feature there will be genetic recombination so this is how the difference is seen between the sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction with respect to genetic recombination and next difference is fourth difference in case of asexual and sexual reproduction in asexual reproduction in asexual reproduction you cannot uh, see the uh, arise of uh, evolutionary characteristic features that means it do not it do not contribute contribute for evolution evolution but here sexual reproduction it contributes it contributes for evolution 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 this chapter you have learnt already in your grade 10th evolution it is a sequential very long event where there is gradual changes in the shape of the organism in the adaptations of the organism which leads to speciation new species will be formed and this concept is called as evolution process right so genetic recombination it is the raw material for the evolution but in case of asexual reproduction there is no genetic recombination and hence the evolution cannot take place the same characteristic features which are present in the parents will be passed to the offspring so there is no question of the arrival of new characteristic feature and next difference between the asexual and the sexual reproduction is in case of asexual reproduction it involves a single parent it is it is uniparental uniparental single parent is enough to give birth to young ones or to reproduce but in case of sexual reproduction it is biparental 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 means it requires two parent male and the female parent example for asexual reproduction you have studied already budding in yeast and hydra binary fission in case of amoeba fragmentation all those things are the examples for asexual reproduction for sexual reproduction the fusion of the male and female gamete in case of flowering plants what we call it as angiosperms and animals so here you can see two examples have given for the sexual reproduction these are the differences between the asexual and the sexual reproduction so let me discuss few of the types of asexual reproduction so the first type of asexual reproduction it is called binary fission binary fission second type budding third type zoospore formation next is the fragmentation spirogyra what you already studied in the grade 10 so in this next in the next class i am going to deal with the examples or types of asexual reproduction thank you